Topic 1 is titled Linear Functions and Systems. In this topic, we'll look at different types of functions, we'll look at transformations of functions, and we'll look at solving systems. Lesson 1.1, Key Functions of Graphs. To look at a parent function means you're looking at the most basic form of a function. We have linear, quadratic, and absolute value. For a linear function, the parent function would be defined as y equals x. That means your slope is 1 and the y-intercept is 0, 0. From there, you can translate the slope and y-intercept to be positive or negative, moving that line all over that, or that coordinate system. A quadratic function, which is that curved shape, takes on the form y equals x squared as the parent function. The vertex, that point that kind of turns the, the direction of the function, is at 0, 0. And from there, you can translate that all over the graph by changing the equation. The last one, absolute value function, notice kind of looks quadratic, but it's straight on the left side and the right side. This will take on the template y equals absolute value of x. And again, that turning point is at 0, 0. What we'll do in this topic is take a look at these functions and then how to translate them all over the graph. When dealing with functions, a lot of time we'll look at what's called domain and range. The domain will be the set of all possible inputs. And those will typically be your x values. Range, then, is the set of all possible outputs. And that's typically your y value. And we're going to use interval notation for these. And interval notation, remember, are the brackets and parentheses. All right, so let's take a look over here at this picture on the right. What are the domain and range of the function defined by y equals x squared minus 3? So because it's x squared, that's a quadratic function, and the minus 3 means we've translated it, and if you look at the picture, it just moved down 3 units. For the domain, we're looking at all possible x values. Notice we've got arrows on the left side and the right side, which means it will go to the left and right forever. On the left, that means it goes towards negative infinity, and on the right, it would go towards positive infinity. We could take any x value we want and plug it into that equation. That means all numbers are possible for x. Because of that, our interval notation is going to go from negative infinity to positive infinity. And remember we talked about brackets or parentheses? The infinity symbol only ever gets parentheses because it isn't an exact location. Now our range isn't quite as lucky. The range is going to go from bottom to top, and if we look at this picture, notice that the bottom doesn't go to negative infinity forever, but the top does. The arrows mean it's going to point up forever, but that bottom right here like bottoms out at a value on the y-axis, and that's at negative 3. So negative 3 is the smallest value, and then everything goes up from there. So greater than or equal to negative 3 is how we would want to define our range value. Whenever we write infinity notation, it's always smallest to biggest, which means negative 3 would have to go first. And then because the arrows point up, that's going to go to positive infinity. It's going to keep going up forever and ever. Now to decide bracket and parenthesis. It bottoms out at negative 3, and there's no open circle to mean it wouldn't be equal to. Therefore, we're going to put a bracket on the left-hand side, meaning it equals negative 3 at one point on that function. 
and then infinity on the right, a parenthesis. Next, let's look at interpreting x and y intercepts. We define those in topic zero, so I'm not going to redefine them on the left-hand side. But we'll take a look at the example on the right. A car starts a journey with a full tank of gas. The equation y equals 16 minus 0.5x relates the number of gallons left in the tank as the car travels in miles. What are the x and y intercepts of the graph of this equation, and what do they represent? So notice the x-axis is distance and the y-axis is gas remaining. So what are the intercepts and what do they represent? Well, if we look at the x-intercept, that would mean where it crosses the x-axis, it looks like it's 320 miles. Think about what that means based on this given information. That would actually mean the car traveled 320 miles and ran out of gas. Something like that. The car traveled 320 miles, then ran out of gas, or stopped, or whatever. Now the y-intercept is all the way up at 16. And notice 16 is in the equation. That should hopefully maybe make sense. That would be the y-intercept. The slope would be negative 0.5. The label for the y-intercept is gallons. And in the directions, it says the car starts with a full tank of gas. So then the y, whoops, the y intercept means the car started with 16 gallons of gas. So we're just kind of interpreting what the x and y intercepts stand for and give them meaning for this word problem. We will finish the rest of the notes for lesson 1.1 in class.